Our first fruit is an icon in our local television industry. She is the hostess of our country's longest running TV talk show for 32 years, which is the same age as the show itself. It was formerly called Community Dateline and it's now known as Dateline. Alison Hennessy, ladies and gentlemen, is a household name in Trinidad and Tobago. She's a TV producer, producing and presenting her very own cooking program. And we also know her as a TV news presenter. We recognize her voice on radio and in television advertisements. She has been a hostess and presenter for many beauty pageants in Trinidad and Tobago. And as an avid mass player, Alison has found the time to host mm -hmm. and present many of the carnival celebrations. A trained chef and owner of the popular Veni Manger restaurant on Arapita Avenue, Alison Hennessy, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, you said it all. I can leave now. <laughs> Not quite. Just one question. Okay. <laughs> Alison, you've been in the business for 32 years. How did you get started? Um, the business of television. The business of television. All right, quite by accident. Um, I was living in England and came home for a vacation. Hazel Ward is um, not auntie. She's pumpkin vine auntie because my step-grandfather was related to Hazel. So she, um, she invited me to come on the program to do some cooking because I just qualified as a cordon bleu chef in London. And I went and I did it. And uh, the people who saw it, the correct people saw it, um, liked it. And that mushroomed into me doing a weekly television program, cooking program. Then I was ready to go back to England. But um, more and more people kept calling to ask me to come and do different things. And then I don't, I think you, some of you may remember Salisha Ali, who used to work on television. She was hosting Dateline at the time. She was one of the presenters. And one morning she literally called in ill. And they called me and said, could you come and do this Dateline program? I thought I was being called to audition for the program. And I went down there in literally old clothes. And because um, Albert Charles said, come now, you have to come right now. So I rushed down. And I remember I had a pair of Alpagats on. <laughs> and uh, I sat down and we did this interview about credit unions. Now, if you've never done a television interview and you're interviewing credit unions, if you get through that, I guess you know that you've got yeah, your foot in the yeah, door. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, I would hate to see it. Um, but that was it. And, and you're then, in these old clothes. Yes, and he said to me afterwards, that was good. And I said, thanks, so do you want me? He said, well, you just did it. I said, what do you mean? He said, I just did live television. Live. live. So that was it. And um, the rest, well, 32 years later, I'm true? here. Yes. <laughs> So tell me, Alison, mm -hmm. who really influenced you? On television? On television. Hazel Ward. Hazel, Hazel Redman. Um, I love, you know, she's very, very professional. She prepares. Um, she has been a guiding light in my life because uh, she does not interfere with a lot of people. In fact, with anybody. But Hazel, in my early days, I guess because we had that relationship, she knew me through the family. Um, if she saw that there was something that wasn't quite right, she would call. And she'd be very gentle, but she'd say, um, so how much preparation did you do for that um, program? And, I'd go, uh, uh, and so she taught me very early that anything you're going to do, that you have to go in prepared. You cannot assume that um, it's going to be an easy walk. Also, um, Melina Scott was there. Mm -hmm. I loved Melina. She helped me too in, in a different side of television, which was the advertising and the selling yes. side. Uh, they were the two major people uh, on television. And I look at everything, every single program that I can look at, um, all the foreign talk shows. Yes, um, I, like, I like British television more than I like American television. Could you tell me why? Um, I think they're more real. Yes. I think they're more, um, they, they, they care more about what they're talking about and the subjects they're tackling rather than the glamour issue. I mean, if you look at the ladies from the BBC, they're quite casually dressed. Yes. Whereas in America, you get the feeling that, you know, the makeup artist has been there, the hairdresser has been there. Everything is like starch. Um, so, so product, yeah, really I prefer, I prefer, yes. yes. Okay, uh, did you know when you first got into television uh, that you would still be on television? <laughs> I hoped, I hoped, I fell in love with the industry. I really did. And it wasn't about um, being on TV. It was loving just what loving what I was doing. And I think that considering I didn't have any formal training for television and also that I didn't do very well at school, 
I, I began very, very soon to understand that there, there was something about what I was doing that was going to work for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm not talking about the people who already had a very high level of education or who had a lot of information. I'm talking about people who probably do not read newspapers and just look at TV because it's there and there's nothing else to do. And I started very, very early getting feedback from people saying, you know, I didn't know that and I know it now. And Alison, my child had that problem and what I heard, you asked the doctor. And I began to feel, I don't want to sound as if it's some big um, spiritual experience, but I think looking back, now I look back, it probably was that, that um, God, for whatever reason, put me there to help communicate. You were blessed with that time. Yes, yes. And it is very interesting that you would have said just now that you really weren't perhaps too academically inclined because there's so many youth out there dumb, dumb. that are worried, <laughs> you know, and I think it's instilled, if it's instilled by the parents. Of I mean, course, it's you have to pass the exam, exam yes. Yeah. But it's not in the all and end all. Yes. And I think that's a very important topic, you know, to go through the children oh, it's, now. Listen. A lot of them think that, you know, I'd be so academically inclined of to course. make it through life. Yes. And look but, how well you have done. Well, I think it was important as well. Um, I went to boarding school, both, I mean, First, we started in Trinidad, I wasn't doing very well. I sent to boarding school in Barbados, I'm still not doing very well. <laughs> I sent to boarding school in England, and I still didn't do very well yeah. as far as um, the academic work was concerned. But I think, um, without boasting, it's important to note that I was voted in all the schools, the most popular girl in school, the girl most likely to succeed. I was the teacher's pet. I was, um, even though at the whenever the exam results were called out, um, the whole school would sit there because we had very, very um, strict rules at school and we all had to sit there like this, you know, particularly in England, waiting for these results. And I would get um, D plus and the whole school would go and they'd look. And before it was even announced, I would stand up. And I remember the day, the very first day I got a C plus, the entire school <laughs> applauded when I got C plus. Yes. But right through that, the nuns encouraged me to do what officer I was able to do, which was lead. I was able to help people in other directions. Yeah. And um, they would use me, for example, to go and sit and look after the class if a teacher was absent, or I was sent into the village. If someone had to go to the dentist, um, let Alison supervise that. Okay. So I was put into that role of leadership. Um, although they, but later on, I have to say, I don't think I, I don't think I worked as hard as I should have done at school. I think I accepted very early that I was not going to pass exams. And maybe if, um, if I was in a situation today that people understood about attention deficit disorder and things like dyslexia, I don't know which one I had, but I certainly was not able to concentrate for a very long time. So that I think I may have been able to do well academically. However, I don't have any regrets, regrets. because I think, you know, it's brought me to what I'm doing today. That's very important. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that you, you, you had the support of your parents. Oh, absolutely. You had the support yeah. of your teachers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At no time did you feel that you're, you, you were not worthy of being no. born? Never. That your never. Never. Yeah. <laughs> never. Yeah. My mother. She, she was absolutely wonderful. My stepfather, now deceased, Dr. Ken LaRoche. My grandfather, now deceased, Augustus Raymond. I have to mention them because they were so important. Whereas my other three sisters were all A students, particularly Rose's, my sister. Oh, she was the brain. I mean, the only reason she didn't leave school at 14 mm -hmm. was because the nuns refused to put her in a class above me. <laughs> so they kept her down. But she could easily have taken her oh, yes. A-levels mm -hmm. and everything. You know, she was that bright. Mm -hmm. um, but mommy just kept saying that, Alison, there's room in this world for everybody. And, you know, there are things you don't need to get O-levels for. You could be a hairdresser. You could do and do a catering course. And I do remember when I, in fact, left school in England, I got into the Morris School of Hairdressing, which at the time was the top hairdressing school. And the morning I started at the school, mommy came up to make sure the transition period was yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And she arrived at this hairdressing school and she says, come, I have to talk to you. Um, I just got a phone call from the Cordon Bleu School of Cookery, which is the most prestigious cooking school in London. Um, they've accepted you. And I said, okay, no problem. And I have to go to class. And she said, no, I want you to go and do this. And I said, you want me to leave hairdressing to go and be a cook? And she said, yes. And I just started crying. You're going to make me a cook, mommy. Everything is on. I was just <laughs> weeping. And she said, Alison, it's not really cooking. It's catering. You'll be able to have your own business. And I, I wept. 
And she said, um, look, I make your promise. Go and do the year's degree. It's a, certif it's a diploma course. Go and do it. And I promise you, at the end of that year, I'll pay for you to do your hairdressing. I promise you. I promise you I'll do it. And I said, if you promise me that I can go back to hairdressing, I will. And she I, kept well, she kept, no, I didn't need to because when oh, I, okay. I graduated with yeah, high yeah. honors, as they call them, blue, <laughs> I got a job. Uh, they gave me a job yeah. in their restaurant, firstly teaching, and then I went on to work in their very small restaurant in Maribyrnong Lane and became the, the head cook there, oh. the head chef, sorry, there. And um, that's how I came to do the cooking demonstration on television oh. in Trinidad and see it all. But what were the obstacles when you came here and got into television? Were there obstacles? Was it male dominated at the time? Did you have to um, fight? No, no, no. There were a lot of women working in television when I came into television. Was, um, I would say it was one of the few industries where you had um, equality. Men and women, women presenters. Yes, there was Hazel Ward, there was Denise Wallace, there was Lucia Farrell, there was Mrs. Hunt. I mean, there were numerous yes, women yes. In, in television. I think um, the major obstacle for me was that um, the first few years, I wasn't really happy settling back into Trinidad. I wanted to go back up to England because I had spent about 15 years there. And um, I was very much thinking... It, in the British way. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned me being an avid masquerader. The very mm -hmm. first year I was back in Trinidad, my sister paid for a carnival costume for me and I refused to put it on. Mm -hmm. I, refused. I said, I'm not going to play mask, you mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there was the last thing in my mind that I wanted to be involved in carnival. Mm -hmm. I was wondering well, about that. Mm -hmm. Coming back to Trinidad, yeah. um, I don't yes. know if it was against all Everything. advice. I wanted to stay in England. Mm -hmm. I'd fallen in love in England, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I wanted to stay in England. I, Fifteen years later, I was very British. Um, I, everything Trinidadian was very, not foreign to me, because I'd had a lot of time here, but I preferred at that time the English way of life. I loved the big city. I loved living in London. I loved taking trains and running for buses. And I, I, It was just very much a difficult situation to settle back into Trinidad. And um, I, I guess that it must have been the music, the people, the in life. Your husband, in England, yeah. yes. When I was 18 years old, I met Emmett. We were both very young. <laughs> and I met him and we sort of went out and then he left me. And then I found him again. <laughs> and later on, you know, we got back together and, and well, we got married. But it was, um, it was a, a difficult time to settle back into Trinidad and Tobago. However, I have absolutely no regrets. Absolutely no regrets. I love Trinidad. But tell me, Alison, mm -hmm. do you enjoy to be, we're back to television now, mm -hmm. do you enjoy to be as much as you did when you were on? It's a different challenge. I don't know if enjoy could be used to what we're doing today because today we have um, a lot of... Um, different television stations, we have competition, so probably we have to be a little bit more serious about what we're doing. Um, when we were first, when I was first doing television, it was uh, TTT, that was the only station, and um, we, we did it in a much more relaxed atmosphere. I remember we used to do a lot of nonsense. I don't know if it still happens in television, in other stations. I know we don't, occasionally it might happen at TTT, but I mean, we used to do terrible things. I'd be talking to camera and the cameraman would be making faces at me and, and doing all sorts of silly things. <laughs> if I tell you things that happened to newscasters whilst they were reading the news, what somebody did to them, mm, you know, something called mooning, <laughs> okay, and you know, you had to keep a straight face because you didn't have that challenge of like, you know, if I'm not the best, somebody else is going to take over. So it was much more relaxed, but I, I, I think I continue to enjoy it. I feel very happy when I drive into the station and I, I know I'm going to do my program. I don't ever feel that, oh God, I wish I wasn't here. And I think I'd be more upset if I had to get him in the morning and think, oh, I don't have this to do. I think that would be really upsetting. But as far as, um, you know, the happiness or, or whatever, there's a bigger challenge now to, to produce better, better standard of programming. Yes. But Do you think that in television today, after mm -hmm. two years, there was anything that uh, perhaps you wanted to do earlier on that you haven't done and you would really like to achieve? Yeah. Before? Yeah. I, I would like, I wish I had continued um, doing the documentaries mm -hmm. that we'd started. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great pity, for example, like right now what is going on at NBN, 
um, when I look back at the amount and, and the, the programs that we did and what we're doing now, it's, um, it's a shortfall by about from, I, I think we've lost about 70% of the local programming we used to do. And they were very, very good programs, but uh, unfortunately, with the advent of, say, TV6 coming on board and then cable television, the advertisers, and even more radio stations, the yeah. advertisers then started ha having to spread their dollars. And so we kept getting less and less money. And the things that we were able to do previously, you'd go and say, we don't have the money to do it. And I guess I wasn't very aggressive in going to try and look for sponsors. If, if I had, maybe I would have been able to carry through with some of those documentaries. But we did some lovely ones. I, I had Joy Gould uh, as my producer at the time. We did um, a series called Monday at Six, where we just picked up on different um, topics and whatever was happening at the moment was alcoholism. We, we did... Um, when people first started get thinking about abortion, and I see it's coming right back. Yeah, yeah. Um, EMA topics, mm -hmm. before we had environmental, serious mm -hmm. environmental laws in Trinidad. Yeah. We took up all these topics, and it was very, very well received. I also did another documentary, um, The Way We Were, which was on Carnival, where we spoke to people who were involved in Carnival. We did this 22 years ago, and we spoke to people who were involved in Carnival like 30, 40 years mm -hmm. before. Um, I don't even know where those tapes have gone. I think we like to, well, um, whenever we have to blame somebody, we, we blame what happened in 1990 okay. and say, you know, the station was destroyed. But I have a feeling those tapes were lost before that. And it's very, very sad because we had excellent, excellent material that uh, we managed to put forward there. So, th you know, that, that I would wish I'd gone further into documentaries. What do you think of the standard in television broadcasting now? Do you think mm. it's uh, increased? Is it improved? No. 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 I'm afraid no. I, um, I think that it's easier now to get into to the media. Sure. It's, it's just like, I don't know, sometimes I, I listen to people speaking and I listen to mispronunciation of words and, and incorrect grammar. And I'm thinking, what standards are we setting for the young people? And I'm, I'm very concerned, and this might be a little bit um, right now touchy because I don't know which station this is going on, but <laughs> I'm a little concerned about sometimes, I, I know that we are Trinidadians and we have to say yes, that we are a people and we speak in a certain way. But I do believe that we have particularly, not the guest, not the guest, I think we as the presenters, as the hosts of the program, we have a certain job to do. We have to let people know that you have to learn to speak properly, that you have to be able to communicate, and that um, you must not feel, for example, if I didn't know how to speak properly, I would be terrified doing this interview, because every time I open my mouth, I would have to be going, what is, is this the correct verb, is this the correct noun, am I saying it right? No, so I think we as television presenters and hosts, we have to speak properly, we have to let people know that in order to succeed in this world, and I'm not saying in order to succeed in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. It's a big world. In order to succeed in this world, you must have command of your language. Mm -hmm. And that's English language. For us, it is not Trinidadianese. It is English language. And we have to be able to communicate in that language. And if you let people feel that it's all right, it's okay, oh, darling, what name, what's going on? No, 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 you can do that at home with your friends, yes. Mm -hmm. But when I am the host of the television program, I must speak properly. Yeah? Not with an accent necessarily, but uh -huh. I must speak properly. Okay. So that is where I feel I'm, I'm concerned about that aspect of what's happening in radio and television now. It's a question of public education. Yes. yes, yes. But I wanted to ask that question when you talked about feedback from the public. Mm -hmm. you know, how did you feel being an educator, you see? Because that's what you were doing. Yes, yes. I felt at first, and um, 30 years ago, I, I was much younger than I am now, and I didn't understand didn't understand the power, the power that I had over people. And it's, um, it, it became very frightening at one point in my life. Um, there was a certain incident, and I, I'm, not, um, I'm not shy of speaking of it now. It was carnival time, and you know carnival time is the time when we eat, drink, and be merry. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably had uh, not one too many, but probably three too many. And uh, we were behaving, I know, in a very disorderly manner. And an, an elderly lady passed, and, and she said, um, oh, no, 
that is not the nice lady from TV. And I heard her. I heard her. And that was the end of a different side of my carnival. And I realized that day that, Alison, you have a very important role to play. If you're going to sit on television telling people and talking to people about various things and nodding your head in agreement, you cannot then be seen in public. You know, if you want to have a few drinks too many, do it at home with your friends and, you know, do it um, down the islands or at your beach house. But um, you have a role to play and therefore... I understand clearly now. Smiling, yeah, because I'm thinking, is that mm -hmm. a broad hint at us? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah, I don't. I've never seen you, but it's advice that you really advice. have to understand that if you are telling people certain things, you have to act in a certain manner. Yeah. You know, if you're going to tell um, young people that um, it's not right to to sort of go out. Neat. Well, I couldn't anyway because I don't have the body for it. But, you know, it's not right to go out exposing just about everything that you have to expose just just before you get to the arrest situation. Then I couldn't sit down on TV with my dress, you know, with all my cleavage out and, and everything. So you have to, there's certain things that you have to fall in with. And um, it's, not, it's not that I suffer doing it. It's just that you are aware that you have a role to play in, and you're an educator, you're a public person, and the people look up to you. And in the same way that a, a woman or a little child would come up to you and go, Alison, um, and the mommy would go, Auntie Alison. And I said, well, that's really here, so calling me Alison, so it doesn't really matter. But the children come and they hug me up and they say, I love you so much, I love you so much. I have to be someone that is worthy of their love. I mustn't be someone that um, I'm ashamed when I close my door that, oh God, if, only, if they saw me like that, how ashamed I am, you know, to be seen like that. So basically, so, you practice what you preach. I try to. Try I'm to, not. Yes. I'm not telling perfect, you. I'm yeah. not telling you. I'm perfect. <laughs> um, but I do feel that when I'm in the public, yes. I that I, I have your, to. Your, yes. Your yeah. Viewers. What mm -hmm. other advice do you give to those like us following in your footsteps? Mm -hmm. you, you are a mentor to us. What other advice would you yes. give us? <laughs> Go to your boss and get an increase in salary. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're, 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 we're working on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, we're working I, on I, that I, one. I, I, right. See you know, um, <laughs> So that's point number one. I <laughs> think. <laughs> I don't know what it is in other Caribbean islands, but um, I think that the, the people who work in the media here must be about one of the worst, worst paid um, salaries. I don't know what you all are earning, but mm -hmm. in, <laughs> people always go, you know, they introduce me to people, particularly when we have foreigners. So this is Alison, you know, she's like the Oprah Winfrey of Trinidad. And I think, please don't think that I have seven cars and eight houses and whatever. But I mean, that, that's one side of it. The money is really, really bad. For people who are working in, in, in the industry, just be true to yourself. Just be true to, be, to yourself. Be, who, you are, you're somebody and you have a lot of different ideals and you have beliefs and there's certain things you agree with. I think one of the major things that I've always tried to do is to stay out of politics. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a joke when somebody says to me, you know, who, what your political party, and I say, oh, Pip. Party in power, That's you know, right. party in power. <laughs> but it's not that you're going to be agreeing with everything that the party in power is saying, yeah. but it really is just stay out of it. Out of it let, yeah. You know, let the people who are elected run the country and you have to sit back and see that what is good and if what is good, you praise it and what is bad, you talk about it without sort of just going after one side. Okay. So I have tried really in my program because my program is not a political mm -hmm. program. So I just stay out of politics. Mm -hmm. I think that's my major Keep advice. The, Keep the thing, you remember earlier you said you're not formally trained. Mm -hmm. um, and today the young people who are getting into the media don't think that they need to be mm -hmm. because they can just go there and say anything anyhow yes. and it's accepted yes I, I don't know if you would like to you know express some views about how you taught yourself mm -hmm. and constantly were training yes. yourself by mm -hmm. as you said mm -hmm. looking at other yeah. shows foreign shows All right. i do else? think um and we i do think that the people who once you get into the media mm -hmm. there's there's something about media i have seen it over the years i have looked at television and seen young people coming up in the business and i think oh he has it mm -hmm. she has it it's something i do believe it is a blessing and it's something you're born for okay. you're, you're born to do it 
if you're going to be good at it mm -hmm. because it's something that um, my very first day on television when I did that cooking program the the director Errol Harry Lal came up to me often and said Alison I was absolutely wonderful thank you but you've done this so often before and he turned away and I said hello never done this before he said what you've never done television before he said no I said, no, he said, well, how did you know what to do? I said, the prop man told me. And that was very true. Your eyes, Mark, was the prop man. And when I came in, he said, put the food here. And when you're doing that, you, you tilt it up a bit. And um, if you have to talk, talk to that camera. The prop man said but that to me. But you were open to listening. Some of our young people yes, are Yes, well, okay, I listened to him. And, mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that over and above that, I also must have just had that feeling that um, I belong here. Okay. But as far as learning, yes, you can get formal training, you get mass communications degrees and everything, but the actual relating to that television camera. Mm -hmm. It's like an actress. You have many actresses and actors on stage and you have some who they've all gone through school and some the audience sits there and they get it, wow. Mm -hmm. And the others who they've spent eight years training and the audience is like, oh, Good, you know, yeah. so I think it's either you have it or you don't have it. But even if you have it, you have to yeah. learn your trade. Yes, you I have to understand that it's not all about you. It's really about the people who are looking mm -hmm. at you. It's not about you. It's people who are looking at you, mm -hmm. and it's either they like you or they don't like you. Mm -hmm. And it comes back again to to being yourself, to having a command of the language, so that you know that anything that you have to say, that you relax saying it to have an understanding of what people are telling you, to be caring, to be caring um, that the person who's being interviewed is very scared. Don't start to, you know, show off and let that person know you know everything about yeah. it. Just relax and, and talk to them the way you would talk to anybody. And I think it's about who you are. If you're an awful person, you cannot be a nice person on TV. <laughs> if you're a nice person, you cannot be an awful person outside. So it's about you. Yeah. Again, it's about I want you. I to talk about Alison's passion for cricket. Ah. <laughs> or is it Alison's passion for Brian Lara? <laughs> Oh, well, no, let, us know. let us know, oh, let us know, let us know, if it is, oh. is for Brian Laura, let us yeah. know. No, I do have a very close um, relationship with Brian Laura, okay. very, mm -hmm. um, very quietly. And um, I'm, my husband is always teasing me about, you know, this, this Brian Laura, Brian oh. Laura. And I said, yes, pity he's so young, Emmett. <laughs> but um, I, I just love the game cricket. Mm -hmm. I um, was introduced it by my family. Is it your family. English root thing, this British? Well, my first introduction to cricket was in, in, in England. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do remember as a child living here in Trinidad, mm -hmm. my mother and my grandmother going off to cricket. I didn't okay. know what they were going to do to cricket. Mm -hmm. And um, they would leave home with um, biscuit tins, biscuit pans full of sandwiches mm -hmm. wrapped in damp cloth. Mm -hmm and little famous flowers because they drank tea in those days at cricket. You didn't drink there. <laughs> and um, they would go off and they'd come back from cricket. And my grandmother always had this book, which I found, I remembered afterwards, was a score book. She used to sit and look at cricket and keep the score the way the scorers do. And um, that, that was the only in information I had about cricket in those days. And I went to England and uh, the West Indies were the best team in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being at boarding school and all these English girls who they had an interest in cricket. And I remember one was just crazy over Clive Lloyd. Um, she was just, Alison, Clive Lloyd, Clive Lloyd. And I wondered, who is this Clive Lloyd? So then I started listening mm -hmm. and looking at cricket. And gradually, but it was when I came back to Trinidad that I started going to cricket regularly. Mm -hmm. I just love the game. But I, I, I love cricket, but I also have a great passion for rugby. Oh, cool. love yes, rugby. Yes, yes. Ever played? Which is, never, okay. never. Mm -hmm. I've never been a, a, I did play netball at school. Okay. But, I, you know, I love, I love the game of rugby. It's very small in Trinidad, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But we belong to a rugby club and we go there and support the so you're well-rounded personality. In sports. In, well, yes, and I like... You do yeah. a little bit of everything. I love balance. everything. Balance, I love balance. Yeah. I'm passionate about things like... Um, I love Whitco Desperados. Mm -hmm. I love Despas. Yes, yes, yes. um, that was through a friendship with Rud the late Rudolph Charles. Mm -hmm. He took my sister and I up the hill, literally took us up mm -hmm. the hill. And um, we, we sort of met the, the pan players and the people of Laventil and I've become 
very much part of, I wouldn't say part of Laventil because I don't want to, people to think that I'm saying that I'm up in Laventil all the time, but I have no problem in occasionally driving up the hill yeah. to into the panyard. I know the boys are practicing and sitting down there drinking a few beers with them and talking. And it also gives me an insight into what is happening in, in other parts of Trinidad and Tobago. Because I think to getting back to you, Anna Maria, what you were saying about doing my job, I feel that I have to understand not what is happening at President's House because I'm invited to President's House to, to sit or stand and have cocktails with you know, all the very well-to-do people of Trinidad and Tobago and, and big businessmen. I feel that if I'm gonna do my job, I also have to know what is happening mm -hmm. um, up, the, up the hill and, and go, to be able to go through Belmont and if somebody calls out to me that I could stop my car and, and talk with them and that um, if I'm driving up somewhere and decide to stop and buy vegetables, I don't want to feel that I just jump out of my car and buy the vegetables and leave because I'm scared or whatever. I feel that if somebody starts talking to me, I, I want to stand yeah. up and talk with them because yeah, the yeah, only yeah. way I'm going to know how to relate yeah. to everybody mm -hmm. is by just doing exactly that. So that's one of the key things to note that you, a mm -hmm. TV presenter personality needs to be accessible. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Every, I, I, I don't like going to all those cocktail parties. Mm -hmm. Occasionally I know there's some that when the invitation arrives, I say, okay, you have to go to this. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel that you have to do everything mm -hmm. at all levels. Mm -hmm. You must be able to go and sit in the West Indies cricket board box and look at cricket, but you must also be able to go and sit down in the concrete stand mm -hmm. yeah. online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Alison, what is your future what what do you aspire to in terms of yeah. uh, television? I yeah. know your restaurant um, owner, chef. Mm. What do you see in the future for yourself? Goodness, I don't. I don't. I mean, I really. It's a terrible thing to say. I don't. I, I just don't know what it holds for me. I, a few doors are being opened up for me in. Um, different directions right now and I, I guess I'm going to have to sit back and, and look at it and make a decision. I would like to think that I'm not too old to carry on doing Dateline. I hope that um, I know that NBN is uh, going through a period right now where it is going to be closed down and reopened. I am not sure if my program is going to continue. I would like to think if it doesn't that there another door will be open for me that I can continue because I feel very very strongly about the program and uh, the feedback that we get and the help that I'm able to get to other people. I am, I'm almost tearful when I think about it. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. God will take me in that direction. My other, um, with the restaurant, um, you wonder how long do you want to sit down and, and continue to run this restaurant, which is, I think, very popular. It's not as lucrative as I would like it to be. It's not making enough money. No, it's, it's really just, sometimes I tell the staff, I am just working in this restaurant to pay you people. But I love them all and I couldn't put them on the street anyway. So the restaurant will continue. And in my private life, I will continue to say that tomorrow I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> and I hope that I will be able to say I stay married and you know that everything else continues but you know to say that i want to do this and, or that or that and i'm help. sure that the listeners mm -hmm. will be very happy mm -hmm. if you continue to uh be a presenter on television because mm -hmm. i'm sure they connect so well with you i hope so I, th I thank you very much for that and i i would i would be silly if i said it didn't happen that the connection wasn't there i i would there be silly i would be pretentious if i said it's not there. I know that there's that connection, and I thank God for it. We would really like to have you on television for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah. as long why not many more? As yes. long as, as, as a friend said, as long as there's powder and lipstick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <I'll> be <there. laughs> yeah, because we ladies know we need the powder and lipstick. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you so thank much. Thank you. You're and very, very welcome. Yeah, before you leave, mm -hmm. we oh have my a goodness. presentation to make wow. to you. Thank you. I'm not sure if our cameramen are prepared for me to stand up, so I better stay seated. Yes. Okay. I want to read what's on this. Should I look at this? Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to read this to Alison. Trinidad Style presents this Lifetime Achievement Award to you. Mm -hmm. Alison Hennessy, 
for your outstanding contribution to the development of Trinidad and Tobago television Thank industry. You. Thank you. And we've dated it 1972 to 2004. Thank you. Many, many more years. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. This is, this is appreciated. And I have to say thank you. You know when you said Trinidad and Tobago Television, and then you paused, and you said industry, carefully I say thank you very much to Trinidad and Tobago Television. Okay? I accept this on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I'm crying. <laughs> Oh, God, beautiful. Thank you very much. Who designed this? It's lovely. We got the award center. Yes. It's lovely. I guess it came up in this fashion. Okay. It's beautiful. I like the design. Mm -hmm. It really is. Never ever seen her this. Really, really nice. It's very pretty. So, do we have to do it again, Steve? Hmm? Yes. Okay. <laughs> was a good rehearsal. <laughs> Lord, you want to tell us again?